Hello, everybody. Welcome. It's time for more Monster Camp. Yes. Today, I brought in the ringers. The ringers are here. True talent. Not the normal garbage I bring like Octo. True talent. You can't get rid of me. That's the only reason why I'm here. I just show Someone up. Someone has to narrate this. <laughs> yeah. We are joined by uh, the one, the only... Uh, hey, Brizzy, how are you even doing over there? Oh, How's it going? Oh, pretty fab. I'm ready to ring, as all ringers do. Is that where that comes from? Ring? You're gonna you're gonna <laughs> ring? As, I don't know. the verb to to ring? I mean, a ringer must ring, right? That's true. He, she, it rings. And as usual, we brought one person who has nothing at all to do with this game. Wouldn't be in it if we paid them. Erica Lindbeck, hello. How are you? Hi, I'm wonderful. So good. Ha honored to be nominated. <laughs> Happy to be here. <laughs> and lastly, certainly not leastly, uh, the man with the only strength of fortitude to voice this, all of the dialogue I ask him to. Again. Again. <laughs> Yet again. Uh, Mr. Octo de Pimp. Hey, wow, the full name? You're going with the full name the full again? Name. You can just call me Octo, it's fine. I'd rather not. I feel like you need to be reminded that Pimp is in your name, in my name. all the time. Don't you forget. I I wanted to buy the domain octo.pimp, but I can't figure out how to do it. And it's Is there a dot me. pimp? It's just somebody I know has dot sexy. And I really what? and I'm like, if you can get dot sexy, then I want dot pimp. I like, feel like on. just about everything is possible. Right? I mean, like, why wouldn't it be? Why can't I get octo.pimp as my website? That just would- I mean, it is monsterprom.pizza, so I mean, yeah, I guess right? you're right. <laughs> so here's the thing is, I wanna, I'm sorry, this is way in the weeds, but I'm, you, you pull my ripcord, so here I go. Um, I wanna get octo.pimp and I want it to redirect to a video of me eating pizza rolls just for like five and a half minutes and then it loops. And that was also going to be, remember when they were like, G4 needs talent. That was also going to be my G4 needs talent <laughs> video. It was just me eating pizza rolls for five and a half minutes and not saying anything. Sorry, let's play Monster Pro. <laughs> now I want pizza rolls, though. I know. Sorry, I, that was like a subliminal advertising thing. I don't know how I got on that. Anyway. Totinos, contact us. Yeah. Okay, let's Totinos do this thing. Totinos presents uh. Monster Camp. <laughs> Make it happen, people. <laughs> Okay, play. We are. I'm so excited. There are four players. There are four of us. Uh, we'll do a short game. Yeah, just with, cause with all the reading, it usually ends up. Yeah, being a long game. Share the controller, Hecky Becky. All right, here we go. Octo. Yes. Take it away. Ah, <clears throat> oh, Camp Spooky, the stage of some of our dearest summers. Back then, we were young and unafraid. With school far away, everything seemed possible as the sun embraced us on our way to camp. Summer has that distinct power, doesn't it? You live for the days while the nights inebriate you with possibilities. It's like life could take a turn at every corner. And for us, it did. This is so exciting. I'm glad that something happened around the corner that was like a positive experience. Yeah, something 2021, happened. 2021, look it up. Yeah, exactly. I like how somebody's reaching over into the aisle to stab here. Jesse, is this you? <laughs> uh, I'll be player four. I'll let the three of you choose in advance. Okay, sure. Who wants to be player one? I'll be player one. Okay. Can I be the Frankenstein lady? You can and you are. Heck yeah. What is your name going to be? Sand lover. S-A-N-D-L-U-V-R. Love that sand. It's coarse and gets everywhere. Oh, L U V R. Sorry. Oh, I'm. Um, you know what? <laughs> what a fool I've go. been. Yeah. What a fool you've been. <laughs> what a Jessie. fool you've been and a fool you are. Do you have a preferred pronoun? She. She is fine. I packed extra everything. What would you like? Is that Sarah Williams? <laughs> sure is. Maybe. Heck yeah. I'd know that voice anywhere. Would you like uh, a bootleg Juan? Uh, too many crosswords. <laughs> I didn't realize Juan's Shade. eyes are sewn on. It's bootleg. <laughs> it's bootleg Juan. Honestly, give me that. Give me that bootleg Juan. <laughs> great. Done. Build your own golem. Do I? Oh, I get three things. Get me that Death Note. The Death Note. Right here, uh, sketchbook. There we go. Yeah, 
Sorry, yes, the, the sketchbook. Right, right, right. No notes of death inside. No notes of death. That's good. Uh, and then what is like the weird hat and scarf and glasses? Well, that's a hipster combo. costume is what it is. Great. Give me that. Give me that, too. I'd love that. Whoa, you are so charming. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, Brizzy, would you like to be player two? Sure thing. Who are you going to be? I will be Red. Ah. Do you have a preferred name for Red? Um, Name her Totina. Ooh. Nice. Good. Totina. Totina. She is good. Gonna win at camping. Oh boy. Mm, how do I want to? You can have be? a little Satanist kid. Oh my god, I need it. Yes. By the way, can we make that bootleg one a real, like, viable Look, merch? Look, I am actively trying <laughs> to make good merch over here. <laughs> Mm, I definitely want the the pinata floaty and probably the curse Done. pen. All right. You sure you don't want business anal paste? Mm, let me think. No curse pen. Okay, I'm just saying. Okay, well you said. All right, Octo. All right, I I kind of Octo, feel are you like gonna be yourself? I Is have this gonna to. Happen? I'll be honest. <laughs> I hate I I hate you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I want my name to be, um. Hang on, I gotta come up with a good one. Does Donkey Kong feet pics fit? Uh, you know it doesn't. Okay, Why are you doing this? Um, hold on, hold on. Let's see if I can. Yeah. Donkey Kong feet fet pick. Donkey there Kong you go. fet pick. Sure, let's do it. <laughs> I think it gets the point. Yeah, across. it really. You kind of know when you see it, right? Right, right, <laughs> yeah. right. It looks like a keyboard smash, but you know, um, I'll go with key. Uh, all right. Okay, so let's see. Um, wow. What's this spooky ukulele? Is it a spookalele? No! It's a totally fine ukulele. Why is it not called a spookalele? Oh, Because it's man. not spooky. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. I gotta take it, though. Let's take it. It's totally fine in the way that I'm totally fine. <laughs> when you're looking at this ukulele, you're like, ah, this is great. Um, what's the totally legit thing? To fake noble fake title. Noble title. Oh, I'm taking that. I want to be noble. Um, and let's take... Uh, Come on, Pokemans. Pokemon TCG. Uh, let's take the Grow Your Own Philosopher's Stone. All right. Uh, what is my name going to be? My name's going to be... Uh, Skazman. Yeah. Skazman. Skazman. I just want to take a nap. All right. Obviously, Skazman loves MC, MC Griffin. Griffin. Who Done. Doesn't? Who doesn't? Uh, a lemonade. You know what? A body a lemonade body pillow. I'd actually have, hot. I'd actually have that. It's hot. Human wool sweater. Mm. North facing. Mo what is this? Flashback light. Nice. The sword of Roar, King of Lions. Oh my Love God. <sighs> but Scott snacks. Everybody loves Scott. I mean, I know I do. And that, and he's a snack. You know what? No. Taking the sword? That's big bold. <clears throat> One might say that the monster prom had hardened us on the highs and lows of love. But no, in love we're always absolute beginners. And summer camp was no different. No one talked about it, but the idea of a summer love loomed over our heads. And who could we pick? Close to the last day of camp, there was a meteor shower happening just two weeks away. Everyone knew that if you were into someone, you were going to watch that damn thing together. And so, a silent yet powerful pressure invaded us. It was the monster prom all over again. Oh. But in the summer and for, in camp for some reason. <laughs> Everybody loves camp. Everything seemed uncertain. Everything but one thing. Whoever we were asking on a meteor shower date, it was probably going to be one of the six coolest people on that bus. Wait. Jesse Cox. Oh, no, never mind. Oh, well, no. Well, I mean, yes, if you're on the bus. Joy Johnson Jojima, a badass witch who wanted to chill a bit after saving the world countless times. Aravi Mishra, a hot-headed adventurer possessed by a curse who had turned out to be the most annoying roommate ever. Calculester Hewlett Packard, a library computer who had become a sentient robot ready to experience life to its fullest. 
Dahlia Aquino, a bluff, a, a bluff, a buff blue demon, a bluff blue a bleeman. bluff blue bleeman, who had set and bleemonger and and blarmonger, who had set her sights on conquering summer next. Damien Levey, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. And Milo Belladonna, a death reaper doubling as an internet influencer who was profoundly in love with life and all its earthly pleasures. Hooray! The bus trip was long and all of summer could be shaped by the first step well taken. And so it was clear, it all came down to breaking the ice and causing a good impression with the right person. Okay. What's your favorite hobby? Uh, crimes. Crimes? <laughs> that was real quick. That was, uh, I almost it's, believe it. It's not just crimes. It's crimes exclamation point. Yeah, the yeah, only one crimes. with an exclamation point. Yeah. Oh, God. I, uh, I know which one means which character, and I don't know... <laughs> Meta and I don't know what I'm doing. Go meta. Do love who you love. What is my favorite hobby? It's saving the world. I'm trying not to be meta, but saving the world. What's my favorite hobby? Keyboard smash. Um, I hate your name. I hate it. I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> no, I shouldn't have done it. It's too late. <laughs> <laughs> uh, efficient farming. You know what? Bless your sweet soul. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go with mm, very anime workouts. I wonder who that could be. Oh ho! Oh. Okay, please, I beg of you. Can I do the voice for Damien? Because I love doing yeah, this right. one. Yeah, all right. This is yeah, all right. I yeah. love doing it. It's so fun. Oh man, crimes are the best hobby ever. I'm hoping crimes will be one of those hobbies that evolve into a career if you catch my drift. I mean, if Al Capone and Richie Nixon could do it, why not me, right? <laughs> Sand lover, maybe you and I could get into the crime biz together. It's never too early to start thinking about your future. Hey, okay. Hey, who wants to be Joy? Oh, are you dabbling in world saving, Totina? Nice. I've pretty much made it my full time job. <laughs> If you ever wanted to take your heroism beyond a hobby, you should call me. I could give you some great pointers on how to stop an apocalypse in its tracks and still have time for a social life. Wow, how do you do that? Maybe we could hang out a bit this summer in between saving countless lives. What do you say? Whoa. Okay, okay, I mean, that sounds cool, I guess. <laughs> All right, Jesse, I think you gotta be. <laughs> I think you what? gotta be. Oh my God. All right, I guess I'll be both these people. <clears throat> Hey, efficient farming is my favorite pastime, too! I even wrote this walkthrough guide on how to do it properly. Um, are you sure this walkthrough <laughs> isn't about actual farming, Ravi? It says step one is to scour for fertile soil. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. That's a super important step in looking for viable monsters to grind. You gotta go where their food source is. And step two is plow the fields with a sturdy backhoe. To dig up the mole people you're gonna be slaying, duh. At least, oh god damn it. At least- <laughs> You have to say it. Donkey Kong Fiend Pix already knows <laughs> what I'm talking about. We should farm XP together while we're at camp. Leveling up never takes a break. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Oh man, I love anime workouts! It's so much easier to get a full workout in when it's a dramatic training montage. I like taking my time weightlifting as much as the next guy, but sometimes it's easier to just slip into a three minute musical interlude where I do bicep curls and scowl to J-pop. God, I feel that. Maybe we can do some training montages together while we're at camp. They're supposedly really good for bonding too. Can she be my girlfriend? <laughs> girlfriend? Oh my god, I, she's so hot. What the I hell? know, right? <laughs> we only had two weeks left to woo our crushes and conquer their hearts. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Yay! Quick, everybody, what's your favorite camp smell? Campfire! Did you say smell? Yeah, yeah. yeah campfire, Probably for sure, campfire. Yeah. <laughs> Just in case. 
Well, I like pine trees. That's nice. I like the smell of pine as well. Burning pine trees. Not what? Well, I mean, I guess campfire. Best of both. Worlds. Only a flame. So wait, what are okay? I'd like to go to the woods. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I'd like to go to the woods. Yes. So I don't know why. Yes. I like... Uh, yeah. <laughs> that day in the woods, you find a mysterious portal to an unknown dimension. Whoa! You're not too, so stupid that you jump into it yourself this time, so you decide to tie a chipmunk to a string and throw it in there. You pull the chipmunk <laughs> back, expecting it to be dead or at least warped by the interdimensional travel, but it turns out whatever is on the other side of that portal taught the chipmunk calculus and some very cogent arguments about gender identity. You and the chipmunk have a long, insightful conversation, and he helps you with your summer school homework. You gain plus two smarts. Dang it, I don't want to be smart. I want to do crimes. <laughs> do smart crimes. But you can do crimes. them smartly yeah. now. Yeah, you smart crimes. I, I suppose with smart. It. They're not mutually exclusive. You're correct. You spend the next couple hours having miserable luck helping Damien, Aravi, and Hex, and Calculester catch the elusive wildfire that Damien's read so much about. But it's okay, because these past few hours of staking out that same spot have allowed you lots of free time to be near, talk with, and take secret sniffs of your sexy friends. <laughs> what? What? I'm sorry. Take secret sniffs? Yeah, you know, a little secret sniff. Yeah. Nothing could possibly ruin the intimate, <laughs> romantic sanctity Have we never secret moment. sniffed anyone? Yeah. <laughs> No, I have not. Well, you know what? I wouldn't expect you to tell us because it is a secret, right? It's a secret. You wouldn't come out and say it. You don't have to. <laughs> Guys, I kind of need the poo. Ew. And you feel the need to share that with the class? Why? Because I need advice. I don't know what to do about it. Error 404. Oh man, who'd like to be Calculester? Unfortunately, I am ill-equipped to give advice on how to defecate, because you see, I am not an organic life form, and therefore... <sighs> yeah, yeah, the machine can't shit. What else is no? Mmm... Normally, when I'm on a stakeout, I just craft my poop into something less disgusting, like a hand axe. Or I dig a hole and do my business. <gasps> what, like, in front of everybody? No way! Ugh, I can't carry this one. It's the outdoors, princess. I promise there have been way prettier people that have taken dumps out here than you. I'm not gonna let you guys compare my dump to other hot people's dumps. That's way too much pressure! Hex, any ideas? <sighs> well... Normally, I just poop nightmares into Ravi's dreams. Have you tried that? Ugh. You what? Is this why I get night terrors when you eat Taco Bell? <laughs> None of this is helping me. And if I don't shit right now, I'm going to get really irritating. Input. Snarky expression of surprise that you could possibly get more irritating. Clearly, Damien is shy about pooping in the wilderness. This is a new experience for him. Can you ease his mind so that he can shit as the bears do? What would you do? This. I can't believe this is a thing. Ah, <laughs> uh, hold on. Convince Damien this is not the woods. Just designer bathrooms are very expensive. Marge. Convin convince Damien to imagine that he's not pooping but doing something far more beautiful, such as giving birth. I, I don't. I don't like either of these options. Uh. Uh. uh let's do the first one. He's never going to fall in love with me. Ah, oh, he's going to fall in love with me. <laughs> Wait, really? Are you sure? Like, if this were a restaurant, wouldn't we have gotten something to eat by now? Hmm. No, trust us, this is a restaurant. Can you tell by this classic modern bathroom floor mirror that looks just like a pond? Is this a camping? Um, indeed, friend Damien. Look at this classic modern toilet paper that looks like a bunch of leaves. <laughs> Running diagnostics check on lie protocol sequence. Sequence successful. Sick. Yeah, and check out this classic modern bathroom attendant that offers you a towel when you're done. His name is Walter. Red. Oh, Red. Hey, Walter. <laughs> Greetings, Master Damien. May I escort you to your shithole? Can you can we get that more of like a greetings, oh, Master yeah. Damien? Go Greetings, again. Master Damien. May I escort you to your shithole? Thanks. I need. I, I had to visualize that character. <laughs> that was for you, right? His his little tiny yes. mustache. Hello, sir. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Right. Of course. 
Damien, appeased, walks off to take a dump. In his absence, you look around the woods and find yourself starting to wonder if you really were in a bathroom all this time. Hmm, interesting idea, sad lover. Given the evolution from classic architecture to modern to postmodern to post postmodern, it's impossible to say. Maybe we can no longer tell the difference between bathroom and non-bathroom. We've all just been living in one giant designer bathroom for a very fancy modern restaurant. You got heck. Called the universe. Wow, that's deep. Or maybe you're just still tripping on the weird glowing moss you licked on the way here. Either way, your mind has been blown enough to earn plus two smarts and plus one fun. Damn. Damn. Score. Hell yeah. Damn. All right. Where are you going? Okay, let's go to the dome. That day at the camp dome, you play a game of tug of war. You see, tug of war is a harder game than it seems. It involves a lot of strategy, and there's a secret technique not everyone knows. It's you need to be strong. You mastered this technique years ago, so you win. The audience is cheering and roaring in joy while you salute them, victorious. They throw roses at you. They throw their underwear. Someone throws you plus two charm, which you happily take. Afterwards, you're enjoying a casual game of hot potato with joy. It's really fun, but you couldn't find any potatoes, so you guys are just tossing a loaded gun back and forth. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Suddenly, two massive, thick, throbbing horns pierce through the walls of the camp dome, and Morty the Minotaur bursts through the wall like the Kool-Aid mascot. Oh no. Challenger oh, appears. this one's Patrick. He's so hot. I love it. Who wants to be? Who wants you, to be? witch! Hey! There we go. It's Joy. But, uh, hey, you muscular pile of muscles. Yes. It's me, Morty the Minotaur, your new rival. And as your rival, I challenge you to the first of our many battles. A spelling bee to the death! He has <laughs> butt cut out. He sure does. No thanks. Nice pecs, though. You can really see the bull veins popping. Haha! <laughs> <laughs> soon, oh my God. soon you will be defeated by my spelling expert- Wait, what? Did you just say no to a challenge? People can do that? I mean, I'm certainly flattered you asked, but honestly, I don't really have anything to gain from this. A spelling bee? What's the prize for winning? A graduating third grade? Suddenly, Dimitri bursts through the other wall like the Kool-Aid mascot. If one more person does a dramatic entrance, this dome is going to collapse! From the darkness, I come. <laughs> Octo! <laughs> Morty! What in the Dark Lord's name is going on here? Doth my nines deceive me, or are you challenging my blood rival? What the hell, man? My nakedness is my power. <laughs> <laughs> That's Back right. off, Dimitri! It's summer camp! The only rule is that there are no rules, except that I can never wear normal clothes because of my bull powers come from partial nudity. How could you? I confided in you that Joy was my rival, and you should know that means I only get to challenge her to duels to the death. Did you guys... did you guys do the witty banter already? We're enemies. With benefits. Listen, you two adorable sex objects, I'm an independent person. I can have as many blood rivals as I want. And frankly, I don't need to have one exclusive blood rival for the rest of my life. I'm perfectly happy to have a series of meaningful rivalries. Maybe one per season, or more. You realize that Dimitri and Morty are right. Being Joy's blood rival means you'll definitely get some heated, intense, eye contact heavy battle scenes with her. Quick, outdo the sexy ripped vampire and the sexy ripped minotaur and show Joy you're a way better rival than either of them. Okay, vanquish Dimitri and Morty by accidentally spelling the word B until someone dies. The real problem here is between Dimitri and Morty. Teach them that when your enemy is also the enemy of your enemy, they become the sexiest thing of all your frenemy. <laughs> ah, mm. let's go with the second one. Okay. Yeah, so fun. Frenemies? What's that mean? You explained to Dimitri and Morty that frenemies means that you are partially friends and partially enemies. You also explained typical frenemy activities. Like spanking. Mm. 
Spanking? I thought that was only appropriate to consensually discipline a chambermaid who had spilled a chalice of wine in your study. Why would I spank Morty? Oh yeah, I No, Tontina is right. Spanking is intimate, but violent. Part friend and part enemy. I understand it now. <laughs> And who said you would be the one spanking, Dimitri? Yikes! Morty and Dimitri spend the afternoon taking turns spanking each other. Morty's spanking <laughs> style is a little sadistic. Well, Dimitri has an I'm doing this for your own good vibe. <laughs> huh? For the love of the goddess, this is incredibly hot. <laughs> nice touch. Oh, you two, I forgot to mention something. Another thing that frenemies do all the time is wrestle each other naked, while covered in olive oil. You bust out some popcorn and spend the whole afternoon with joy, watching Dimitri and Morty. Have- have tongue wrestling contests. Use a whip to carve their initials into each other's muscular backs. And viciously tickle each other until Morty begs Dimitri for mercy. You know, Totina, if you can vanquish my other two rivals this easily, you just might be the greatest rival of all. Well, <laughs> I like the way you think. Maybe someday we could be frenemies ourselves. Ooh! You gain plus two smarts and plus one creativity, but you don't even care because joy is hot and your heart is fucking racing. Where to go? Uh, where to go? Good question. Where to, donkey? I'm so creative, but I'm not very fun. That's just kind of in general. Um, can I go to the lake? The lake is fun, right? I think the lake's fun. Uh, yes, I I'll, believe so. I'll go to the lake. While looking around the lake for a private place to take a pee, you find a treasure map buried in the sand! It leads to an X in the center of the lake. You gather a crew of trusted friends, don your eye patch, and sail out there to find the booty! When you arrive, you find a tiny island with a single palm tree. You dig up a box that says, Open in case of a very boring day. You open the box and find plus two fun! Arr! Hooray! You already knew Aravi was loaded with bravery, determination, and chutzpah, but then- but as she roots through her bag, it's clear she's loaded with some pretty sick items as well! Unbelievable! Why are all my battle axes plus one through plus two hundred all out of order?! You got hexed. I got bored while you were sleeping and arranged them by color! Aravi rolls her eyes and drops the battle axes on the ground to be sorted later. Oh, here's that Alexandria's cursed emerald diadem I found in that one dungeon. And may I just say, I'm very cool with not being the only curse in your life. Ooh. Mrs. Mishra, how dare you litter on the hollowed grounds of Camp Spooky? Oh, uh, I'm not littering, Camp Director Miss Weaving. I was just looking through my bag for- You're telling me that all these items were in that one small bag? Likely story. And what is this bottle of booze? That's not booze. That's my therapist. Then you need a second therapist to help you deal with the fact that you keep your first therapist trapped in a bottle. If that were true, which is, is obviously not, and I can prove it! Let's see exactly what kind of spirits are in here. If it's Mrs. Geist's toilet wine again, I swear. Hey, try to listen to your inner self. Aw oh, man, Camp Director Miss Weaving raises an interesting point about keeping me in a bottle, Aravi! <laughs> hmm. Do you think you feel the need to keep people physically tied to you because of your brother Salil's disappearance? So you didn't sneak booze in. You snuck a pet into camp. That's even worse. I'm confiscating it immediately. I don't want to talk about my feelings. She's not my pet. She's my therapist. And I'll prove it by showing how calm and level-headed therapy has made me. Woohoo! I've been working so hard at therapy, and I'm getting so good at therapy. Huh? I appreciate the enthusiasm, but therapy isn't something you get good at. No, I'm slaying therapy, and I'm going to prove it by, by, Donkey, uh, Donkey Kong Feet Picks, I forgot your name. How am I going to prove how good I am at therapy so Miss Weaving gives Nora back? Uh, you've done dream interpretation therapy, right? Demonstrate analyzing the shit out of a dream. It's very to high, but you can still ace the test. The ultimate test, the Rorschach test. Um, that second one sounds... Smart? No. 
It it sounds smart because you know a thing, right? Yeah, because I know a thing. I think the first one for creativity, maybe. Let's try. It. Let's see what happens. Oh, Fuck yeah! Hey, Ooh. all right. Oh, that's true. I'm always explaining my dreams to Nora, even when she asks me to stop and move on. <laughs> well, Ravi, even though dreams can reveal what's on your subconscious mind, it's still important to confront the realities of day-to-day -day life. Adventure but away. now I'm going to use all that dream analysis to get you unconfiscated. So you see, the therapy trap we set is finally going to be sprung. Hey, listen. Therapy isn't a trap, Aravi! Okay, you guys, everyone listen to the dream I had! Then I'm going to explain the dream I had, okay? Ooh, yeah. Yes, everyone loves hearing about other people's dreams. This is a well-known fact. Mm. <laughs> okay, once upon a time, and that time was last night, I went to sleep and I had a dream. And in this dream I had, I was walking through the woods and got lost, which obviously indicates that in real life, I am definitely 100% sure of what I'm doing, which is why my subconscious needs a break from being so sure. Huh? A bear came out of the bushes and offered me an ice cream cone. The ice cream was pink, which proves I don't have any unresolved issues with my brother's disappearance. The sprinkles on the ice cream cone turned into dolphins, and they flew into the sky and swam through the clouds, meaning that I'm a badass destined to conquer the very stars. The bear invited me to croquet, but the mallets were actually the corpses of all my friends, who had each been killed in painful, horrible ways as the result of my failures. We are totally winning our lane. Which shows that I am a healthy, well-adjusted person, and the therapy totally worked. I've had that same dream. So you see, Camp Director Miss Weaving, this proves that Nora is my therapist and not a pet! I'm going to give you the fairy back, just on the off chance she is your therapist, because you clearly have a lot of issues to work through, Mrs. Mishra. Take that, noob! Ha! <laughs> Shows how much she knows about dream analysis! A lot of issues to work through? <laughs> Ridiculous! Right, Nora? Right? Right? Nora, right? Uh, am I right? I'm. Tell me I'm right, right? Nora, right? I'm Nora. Tell me about yourself. Aravi, why do you think it's so important for you to feel like you're winning at therapy and cured of your issues? Therapy is a process. Mm. A process in which I explain my awesome dreams? Let me tell you about the one I had with the woolly mammoths at Boo Paul's Drag Race. Nora dutifully f listens to Aravi's dreams, including the part where she and Donkey Kong Feet Picks got up to get something she won't specify. Nice. You gain plus two boldness and plus one smarts. Hooray. Now it's your turn, Jesse. Okay. I'm gonna go to the haunted house, because that's where I'm at. <gasps> There's a- I didn't know there was a haunted house option. Ooh. While wandering the haunted manor, you're ambushed by a group of evil spirits. You put up a good fight, but there's just too many of them. They run away with your immortal soul! Luckily, you always knew this day would come, and you replaced your immortal soul with a beanie baby years ago. Good foresight on your card, you gain plus two boldness. Although, unlike your immortal soul, uh, the beanie baby will retain its value. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, that's true! Mm, super true. Aravi has drafted you and Dahlia into her party. She's got an important side quest to complete that has to do with the ghosts hanging around at the manor. A ghost approaches the three of you and speaks eerily. Please, young heroes, accept my quest. I have roamed for centuries. Reunite me with my one true love. I beg you. Prepare to die. Get him, Dahlia. Bottle that bitch. With absolutely zero mercy or hesitation, Dahlia leaps up and traps the ghost in a classic ghost trapping model. Take that, noob. <laughs> yes, that's nine innocent ghosts captured. We just need 11 more ghosts, and then we can feed them to that soul eater and collect all that sweet XP! Best summer ever! Usually I hate fighting ghosts because you can't kill them, but these ghosts are really screaming in agony! Best side quest ever! Suddenly, a terrifying masked weirdo jumps out of the shadows. He's wielding a bloody knife and looks like he wants to kill you because he... because you had sex before marriage! Here's Jerry. Oh my god, what, what, what is this creature? A mass psycho killer. You want me to be the, the serial killer? 
Uh, do you want to be- are you- are you saying you're a serial killer? No, I just wanted- I thought to carry me for are the you, boys! Are you coming out of the serial no, killer closet? No! I'm not! I mean, I- I eat a lot of cereal, I don't know if that counts as killing it. Alex, do the serial killer, I want to hear you do the serial killer. Uh, uh, roses are red, violets are blue, uh, my name is Jerry, and I'm gonna kill you! Ha <laughs> I rhyme! I'll now run for my scary knife, you sinful youths! Huh. Bro, you're gonna murder us, and you only brought one bloody rusty knife and a hockey mask? Do you have any idea what level I am, shithead? So scrawny. Yeah, we're not afraid of you, scrawny. If if you were even mildly powerful of a warrior, you would have challenged us to a fight to the death directly. Duh. Out of my manner. You foolish children, uh, no one <laughs> teen enters this creepy old mansion and gets out alive, except for like 70% of them. Oh, but before I kill you, can I have your autographs? <gasps> huh? What do you want? <laughs> autographs? Did people finally figure out that I'm the Zodiac Killer? Uh -huh. Whoa, seriously? Well, I'm a huge fan. But no, I get autographs from all my victims before I kill them. All professional serial killers keep some kind of memento of their killings. That's not how Hex rolls. Bullshit. We're not signing anything, dude. Last time I fell for the serial killer victim of mental autograph scam, I got my fucking identity stolen. Yeah, come on. Wait, that's not fair. You guys, I can't murder you all unless you give me your autographs. It's no fun killing if you don't get a cool, sadister trophy. Come on, all you have obviously killed people before. Did you collect a cool trophy from your victims and hide it in a laminated file in your room for the police to discover? Uh, uh, not really. Although, to be fair, I do always loot my enemies' corpses, and I guess collecting XP for every time is kind of a trophy. <laughs> Sometimes, when I defeat a powerful rival in battle, I'll use their body as a bludgeoning weapon to kill their closest friends. Does that count? <laughs> I never collected stuff from corpses, but I would send these hilarious letters to the press telling the cops to get good. And these, like, unsolvable cryptograms. <laughs> LOL, LOL. Oh, this seems like an opportunity for you to get in some bragging. Impress your friends and the serial killer with the super cool trophy you collect from your victims. What do you collect, Jesse? Uh, I always collect the teeth of the people I murder so I can make cool friendship bracelets out of them. Please don't take any of this out of context. Uh, material goods are overrated. I collect the happy memories I made with my victims. While killing them, just look at my murder scrapbook. Oh my goodness. What is... Do I have any boldness or fun? I feel like the <laughs> second one's creativity. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I know you're very bold, Jesse. You're a bold guy. I know. My, I'm worried that any of these could be smarts or creativity. I will fail them. There's no way the first one is smarts. That's... I, I don't know. It could be creativity, but it might be fun. Murder friendship bracelets. That could be fun. You're right. That could be. F it. <laughs> oh, so hey. Holy shit, Scass man. You use people's teeth to make friendship bracelets? That's. That's. Fuck yeah. Fucking awesome. Whoa. <laughs> Gladiator energy. It's hot. Well played. Perfect way to make use of your victim's valuable teeth! You surprise everyone by revealing that you have teeth friendship bracelets for all of them! You've got five. One for Dahlia, Aravi, Hex, Jerry, and you, of course. Nice. Whoa! I just noticed that my bracelet is made entirely out of upper jaw third molars! Such a dope detail, Skaz Man! Yeah, these bracelets are awesome! We're officially teeth friends, you guys! I've been waiting for this day my whole life! <laughs> yeah! Wow! This is the first time I've ever had any friends at all, actually. Yep, that sounds about right, Jerry! <laughs> <laughs> you and your crew of teeth friends hang out all day, catching ghosts, having some laughs, and cracking open some cold ones together. 
the bracelets bond you together for life. And dental insurance is super expensive, so it's a good idea to keep some spare teeth around in case you need them. Your shrewd dental foresight is rewarded with plus two charm and plus one creativity. Noise, noise. We are killing it so far. Yeah, we're gonna all get dates. Uh oh. Everyone choose. All right, everybody a movie. choose a movie. Um. Oh wait, what? What's the context? Like, what's the criteria? Just choose a movie. Any movie. Oh, okay. The Black Coat's Horton daughter. Here's a who. Uh, Big Money Hustlers, starring the insane clown posse. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, <laughs> Alex. What? Uh, I <laughs> should choose a movie. Um. Uh, Eight Mile. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Which movie would be the hardest to reenact as a fireside play at summer camp? Oh my Ooh. god. Ooh. Well, I lose. Mine's probably the easiest to reenact. Horton here's a who. How do you do all the tiny stuff? Versus okay, big so stuff. Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out here right now. When I was in first grade, we did a version of Horton Here's a Who during <laughs> summer camp. No I'm way. sorry. What? Yes, absolutely. Uh, excuse yes, me? absolutely. Defeated. Defeated. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. So what is what is first? How do we name a first? Um, listen, I'm just gonna throw it out there and say you can't really do a fireside reenactment of big money hustlers without the insane clown posse there and getting them to go to summer camp with you is probably a little bit harder than you think it is. I think, I think yours is on the same level as mine. <laughs> what? No, it isn't. It's just, it's just talking and, and, and singing. That's what, that's what being around a campfire is normally. Ah, fuck, you're right. Shit. Okay, well, I think Erica's first. Wait, why am I first? How am I first? Because yours is the hardest to reenact as a fireside play. Do you guys even, do you know, do you know the Black No, so that would make it very hard to reenact. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. That's a great first. <laughs> um, so, uh, fine. I say I'm second. Jesse is, no, I'm second just because I'm saying it. Um. What? <laughs> fine. No. You can be second. Fine, Jesse, you can be second. Well, all right, I'll be second, and then you can be last. Okay, what? fine. I'm, I'm not. Okay, first <laughs> of all, it's literally been done. That's fine. Today Whatever. I just wanted Octo to be last. That's, That's fine. fine. I get it. I understand. You know, where's the payoff? Bring the strippers and boots. We do occasionally talk about video games. Bring the strippers and boots. Out of that town of video games. Bring the strippers and boots. Oh, thank God. I don't need pants now. Hey, JC. What are you doing? Not much. Making a fortune. It's a production of broadcast. Yeah, now sing the music. It's a production of broadcast. Bring the strippers and boats. It's a production of broadcast. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. It's a production of broadcast. You got 